My name is Fergus Foran and I'm the writer and composer of Most Peculiar Dreams, which is an original musical. Um, and it's based in New York and it centers around the Donnelly family. And uh, the Donnelly family consists of Annie Donnelly, uh, Sean Donnelly Sr. and Sean uh, Jr. and his sister Gracie Donnelly. The first uh, couple of workshops we did, I think by the end of the third workshop, we had the core people there who were just going, do you know what, we want to be part of this, we're, you've got us, we like the story, we love the songs, let's just run with it, let's get it, let's get it sorted. It's been, it's been a revelation, I mean, the, I think the, the cast that have been working on it are exceptional, they're a really talented bunch and they've thrown themselves into it. Um, from workshops which we started by doing on the songs. And Ferg would have a, a fair idea of the layout of the song, but not absolutely cast in stone, so we'd workshop it. And the songs that are featured uh, on the video here, they were um, as a result of, the, of that process to, to mature the songs along and, and to bring them in with work with the musicians. And that was where the fun really, really started and where it really began to take shape. Um, and then we were lucky then to get some excellent musicians uh, involved at an early stage as well in those workshops. It's a passion of mine and it, it's slowly becoming a passion of everybody else that's involved in it and, and we're trying to create publicity about it but there's a buzz around it right from the kind of first few workshops that we did. People start talking about it, people were talking to other people about it and saying look this is a good show I think you know, you might want to get involved in this. And he contacted me and said, uh, would I be interested in meeting with him and having a bit of a chat? Um, so I did. And that's when I met the passion that Fergus has for the show. Um, he just effused, if that's the right word, I kind of think it's, he came out with, he gave out this energy um, about the show that both enthralled um, and excited me um, and thought, yeah, this is the project I want to be involved with. Originally, we had the time zone of kind of post-war America, New York. Um, so that's an era that I'm quite comfortable with. So I did a little bit of research and we decided to go with the with a particular color scheme for the Sycamore Club, which is where a lot of it is based. Um, and we went with kind of um, an ethereal theme, so blues, greens, purples, um, anything to kind of give that effect and real kind of um, quite a lush background to it. <laughs> Our main characters is Henrietta Harmon, who, between her and Bobby Collier, they're really, I think they're the, like, they're the soul of the Sycamore Club. They're really um, important to the, the storyline and they really spend a lot of their time there. So I nearly wanted to make them part of the Sycamore Club like, and integrate all of the little details in their costume. Bobby Collier. So Bobby Collier is um, a billionaire. So he owns a chain of hotels in the States. So he has lots of properties around Europe as well. Uh, and his relationship with Henrietta is a little bit vague. So his story is that he was at a fundraiser. He was hosting a fundraiser. Uh, and Henrietta got up and sang. And he fell in love with her voice. Said, here's my business card. And the rest is history. So their relationship grew from there. It's a kind of a father-daughter relationship. He seems, sees himself as a substitute father for her, wants to look out for her. And with a voice and a face that she has, he uh, just thinks that she deserves world fame. And he's made sure that that happens. So she lives in the penthouse of the Sycamore Club, uh, which is centred in one of his main hotels in New York City. Uh, he's very defensive of her. He loves her, as he says, like a daughter. 
you know, other people kind of doubt that, but that's other people. They can think what they want. He can't really do anything about that. You ever been to one of my clubs? Never. Never? Man, you don't know what you're missing out on. I can't afford it, baby. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you in. We'll sort you out VIP style. I'm a guy you need to know. Absolutely. Ears to the ground, son. I'm telling you, ears to the ground. The man gives him his card and says, well, look, boy, pop down to the Sycamore Club later and we'll, uh, might have a bit of work for you. And he looks at the card and it's this big, big name, Bobby Collar, who runs this most famous club, the Sycamore Club. So Sean is like, oh, here we go. This is my big, big break. So he goes that night to head down to the cafe and he's sitting there outside and he goes to go in thinking, I've already made it now. And as soon as he gets in, the people are like, what are you doing? You're not here to sing. They hand him an apron and shove him out into the cafe and it turns out, you know, he's just waiting the tables, like has to work his way up through everything, just like everybody else. She's based in New York. It's where she calls her home. She lives in the penthouse of the Sycamore. Um, she started off as a hostess in um, the Collier Hotel, and that's how she met Bobby Collier. She's actually very defensive of his reputation, and um, she sees him more as a father figure. We know, like from old neighbours' opinions, that she was like a young, polite, shy girl. She was quite religious, and other than being a noted singer in the local church, um, she was just she was no one extraordinary. So Mary Margaret and Sean would be best friends. They grew up together and I suppose they've always done everything together. And when he moves into the city, she's happy from away, but yet she's kind of like, oh no, I'll miss him. Um, but yeah, I suppose she's even proud of him when he meets up with Bobby and when his career is kind of, he joins the Sycamore Club and she is really proud of him now. She doesn't like the fact that his relationship with Henrietta she doesn't feel that that's something for him. She kind of feels that he deserves better, maybe. Annie Donnelly is the mother of Sean. Um, she's also the mother of Grace, who's his older sister. And she's a devoted wife and a devoted mother. She had a very traumatic time with her pregnancy with Sean Jr. Um, they were told that he wouldn't make it. So, um, while they were in the hospital, she had an encounter with a very kind stranger who helped her cope with the trauma of being told that she was going to lose her baby son. And by divine intervention, she believes, and her husband agrees with her, he made it. And he's a very musical boy. And she has great hopes for him and for her daughter, Gracie. And she's very proud of her husband, who's a war veteran, he was a major and was awarded a Medal of Honor by President Truman. He was promoted in the field because of his acts of bravery and because of his strategic brain and his military mind and because he was a great leader and that became apparent during the war. Uh, the reason he won uh, his medal in the war was that he had this incredible uh, act of bravery uh, where he was the last survivor of an attack. But the reason he was the last survivor was because he tossed a grenade into an arm stump and it blew everybody away, uh, so it destroyed the enemy position. Uh, all of his comrades were already dead and he was the last man there, or so the story goes. Come and see our show and find out where the story goes and find out more about them. He uh, becomes John Brown, an amazing singer, a really big star with Henrietta Harmon and they have a great relationship and to find out what happens you have to come to the show. There's a key lyric in one of the main songs on it and it kind of sums it up. So life is a game, it's incredibly strange. Sean, my beautiful son, envy of everyone, gifted and bright, Born on a night wild and incredibly mild, said 
you were fading away that you last a few days or a week at the best and the heart in my chest nearly left me behind but I knew I knew we can rewrite our fates life's just a game it's incredibly strange Apple of your mother's eyes And how everyone cried When we told them the news The newest life's days Have been numbered by fate But I knew Can rewrite our fates. Life's just a game. It's incredibly strange. Shame that he calls himself John, and his family name's gone. He could be truly great if he gets himself straight, keeps his feet on the ground. But I knew, I knew, we can rewrite our fates. Life's just a game. It's incredibly strange.
Just a flesh wound Did you get in a fight Or just fall at the fence In the grand national truth The park His friends will relate His amusing hijinks As he winds his way home From the bar Johnny anywhere And some 